For whatever it lost from the standpoint of commercial appeal as the blockbuster pay-per-view event of the summer. Manny Pacquiao's return on Saturday following a two-year layoff still presents an incredibly intriguing style matchup. Before we proceed, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. After unified welterweight champion Errol Spence Jr. was forced to withdraw just 11 days out following surgery for a torn retina, reigning WBA titleholder Jordanis Ugas was bumped up from the pay-per-view main card to face Pacquiao in the main event of a premier boxing champions card at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Even though Ugas lacks the threat of fight-ending power on the same level as the unbeaten Spence, the 35-year-old brings the technical know-how from his time as a decorated Cuban amateur and great size for the division. He's also comfortable exchanging firepower at close range behind his high guard due to his defensive proficiency. But most important for the 42-year-old Pacquiao, and one of the major reasons the Filipino icon was so willing to accept such a difficult fight on short notice to save the car. Ugas has the WBA title that Pacquiao won in his last fight from 2019 when he handed Keith Thurman his first defeat. Ugas was upgraded to full champion amid Pacquiao's layoff, which didn't sit well with boxing's only eight division champion. When comparing the skills of Spence and Ugas, it would be difficult not to shade the advantage toward the pound-for-pound -pound ranked Spence in just about every category. That's why the betting odds shifted so quickly from Pacquiao as an underdog to a 3-to-1 favorite following the change of opponent. But make no mistake, this is a fight Ugas should still win as long as he understands the gravity of what's at stake at this level and what is required of those coming to Las Vegas to take on such a huge name. Not only will Pacquiao undoubtedly have the crowd's favor as a beloved star, he'll likely have a similar default favor from the judges given that he fights with such a high output by constantly amping up his forward pressure. Ugas certainly has the ability to neutralize some of what Pacquiao does best given his size, defense and technique, along with his strength as an accurate counterpuncher. But unlike some of his Cuban contemporaries, like Erislandi Lara and Guillermo Rigondeur in their biggest fights, he will need to be mindful of keeping his output high enough to have a shot on the scorecard. Matching Pacquiao's effort and aggression can obviously be a dangerous proposition. Although the effects of his layoff will be interesting to see in the early going, Pacquiao looked as fit and fresh against Thurman as he had in years. He kept up his stamina late into the fight and remained the aggressor by unleashing his patented combination punching from awkward angles. This should be a great test of Ugas' chin and his willingness to fight his way out of trouble should Pacquiao penetrate his high guard. Many fighters have entered with ideas of how they might overwhelm Pacquiao only to be forced into passivity by the threat of quick punches they never saw coming. The fighters' contrasting skills and the questions regarding both Pacquiao's layoff and his inability to prepare at length for Ugas' style could produce an interesting chess match with ebbs and flows as both fighters take turns implementing their will in alternating rounds. But for Ugas to best Pacquiao in that type of fight, he'll need to not only walk the tight rope of avoiding knockdowns, he'll need to be quick in how he adjusts on the fly along with Pacquiao who holds an extensive advantage in terms of experience against elite foes of all shapes and styles. Let's just say there's a reason why only Floyd Mayweather has been able to outthink and outmaneuver Pacquiao at welterweight for a full 12 rounds. The fight's outcome might be as simple as this. If Pacquiao has lost a step, Ugas is skilled enough to impose his will and have a shot at winning a decision. But if Pac-Man, looks anything like the whirling dervish he still was against Thurman. The oddsmakers got this one right.